Hey guys, it's the Horror Junkies of Utah, and we are talking about The Walking Dead on our weekly episodes. This is Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 7. What's the name of this again, Alex? Heads Up. Heads Up. And why is it Heads Up? Because it's what Enid yells to a mysterious character. <laughs> a a, a very mysterious no character. No spoilers. Which... Spoiler alert, we are going to talk about a lot of spoilers because I don't think we can even talk about this episode without spoilers. Let's just jump into this, though. Um, biggest uh, biggest gripe, is it right off the bat, like mine is, um, with Glenn coming back? Oh, yeah, it... it's... Uh, I mean, that's, that's like my... the episode where he dies about such a big slap in the face this episode was like those pornos where the girl has slut written across her head she's getting beat up and slapped and the guy's spitting on her face like you fucking like that and they're like yeah I like that I like that they're calling her a bitch and a whore that's what the walking dead did to us they wrote whore on her face peed in her mouth and we fucking love it I, that's what I, this episode was I do agree they basically so there was one other episode after the initial episode where we all thought Glenn died that was no, good. There was two. There was two episodes. Well, in your opinion, in mine, there wasn't any. There was, <laughs> there, there was the episode with the Morgan. That was good. All the other ones were shit. Because there was three well, in between, wasn't three. there? That's right. There's not two. There's three. And oh, the one that, that I liked was okay. The other two were like a bait and switch to me, to where it's like, oh man, I'm just hanging around to see if Glenn's alive or not. I don't I even like, know anymore. I like that we both. Well, I guess maybe at least me. I forgot about that one episode after the Eastman episode that was so bad. It was oh. literally forgettable. No, no, I totally agree. <laughs> it was that one that we both... It, what, what was the name of that episode? Like, uh, Now. Now what? Or, yeah, it was Now or something. Yeah, now, now this is a shitty episode. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, but... Man, um, this episode, I, di I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it, and I do think that AMC kind of just slapped everyone in the face. But it's funny, though, because I think it was, as soon as the episode started, and I seen that scene where, obviously, he is um, has what's-his-butt on top of him, and the zombies are ripping him apart, and I was like, okay, here we go, right under the garbage can, like everyone predicted. Uh, but... <laughs> watch the video uh, the, the video you watch the episode where he shoots himself and he falls into Glenn and they both he like he falls down holding him and yet somehow the other guy ends up with his head at the base of the dumpster laying on top of Glenn like he did a corkscrew flip when he killed himself and somehow just landed perfectly across Glenn who I guess his feet weren't edible or something I don't know I because, I cannot agree more and another thing that I thought was quite funny is when we originally seen this scene in uh, the thank you episode, he, he blows his fucking brains out all over Glenn. They fall, and it's like a mosh pit of zombies down there. But now, all of a sudden, there there's a lot of zombies, but not what I remember seeing. I mean, I remember seeing thousands of them, and now there's he's got room to move, and they were like all up against the... The, that garbage can and everything, and now he's like, oh, I'm getting under here, I'm commandoing this, uh, I'm going to stick a few of them in the face, and no one noticed me, and I'm going to sit here and, you know. Yeah, the guy's name was Nicholas, it was on the tip of my tongue, I can't remember, when Nicholas shoots yeah. himself. But it's, he crawls under a dumpster, and he's there for at least a day, because he, he had the nighttime transition, and it goes into the, back into the morning, so he's there for... Well over 12 hours. Yeah. Somehow he's not bitten on his feet or his hands. Again, his feet aren't edible, apparently. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was... The and, Enid, and then right after Enid finding him, and we were talking about this earlier, this is when the show just jumps the shark. It's, oh, corkscrew lands on top of me. I crawl into the dumpster. I made it. Oh, Enid knew I was there the whole time because she throws me a water, and now I know how to get back home, and I know what needs to know about my wife, and blah, 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 blah. Just all these amazing things just suddenly happen. And what sucks is that would have been a probable way for him to get out is if she, uh, Nicholas shoots himself, glances on top of Glenn, and then Enid comes by and creates some sort of distraction. And yes. of course that doesn't happen. It's, it's oh, a 12-hour transition. underneath the dumpster. Oh, he has 
some water with him, but not a lot. But he didn't know he's, he's there. She's gonna throw him a bottle of water as soon as he gets out. Yeah, That's all good. she's Makes like, you know, us. people will buy it. Fuck him. <laughs> There you go. That's that's kind of what I felt with the beginning of the episode. Um, and then he goes into this kind of uh, like a department store or whatever where it looks like she's been kind of maybe hanging out a while. Or was she just kind of there? I don't know. Uh, just because of her character, she's kind of always on the go. Mm-hmm. I don't think if she was there, she was there very long. Now, um, when she runs away and Glenn pursues her... Before we jump into some of the other things about the episode, I I just want to know, do you think it's fair of Glenn to be like, you're coming back? You know, he doesn't he, leave her a choice. Yeah, I don't think he knows much about her, and I, I think even in the episode he wants to know where she's staying, which I means clearly he doesn't know much. Mm-hmm. But I think in his view, she's just a scared girl, and that their crew can help her, and I think maybe it's feel bad if she goes out there and dies and he doesn't do everything he can to protect her. It's not very well established, I agree with you on that. Yeah, I know. more, but that's what my guess is. For some reason, he references Maggie. Yeah. Which I don't get, because she's like, I don't even know your wife. I don't even know you. Yeah. It makes sense if maybe Maggie had taken her in and they kind of had a almost mother-daughter kind of relationship, but there was nothing like that. No, it's not just, at all. Oh, uh, Maggie... That's my, my wife, she's there, she'll be mad if you're not. Yeah, and see, I didn't get it either, I was like, okay, um, whatever, let's keep this character in here longer. Um, and so, she points the gun at his face, and is like, I'll fucking shoot you. And he's like, no you won't. She's like, I will if you make me, but he obviously calls her bluff. But I think it would have been awesome if she just blew his brains out, and we lost Glenn that way. <laughs> Yeah, it would have, I, I agree it would have been really, I would have completely changed my mind about the episode um, if something really weird had happened like that, where <laughs> I just, I don't know. just happens to die because of something really silly or... Like, they uh, hold you on, you know, he, he survives all this stuff just to be get, just to get shot by her. <laughs> 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 Here you go, boom! <laughs> But, so, that doesn't happen, and they start making their way back towards Alexandria, obviously. And now we have the walkers have surrounded the whole place. And they are, you know, um, it's like the last episode, I think Rick's like, the walls will hold out, but can you? Right. And I do think we have some of that with the people inside, and we're seeing that. Um, especially with... Uh, the younger brother of the two of, um, what's her butt? Uh, Deandra? Are you yeah. talking about Spencer? Yes. The one, you know, he's like, I want to learn to shoot. I want to do this. But secretly. No, no, it's not Spencer. Sorry. Or, um, Spencer was the one who, in later in the episode, makes an idiot of himself. You're talking about the guy who's in the lover's quarrel. Yes, the yes. With Glenn. With Glenn with I can't Glenn. remember his name, um, but Yeah. And he's like, you know, teach me to shoot, do this. And he steals the bullets. And he's obviously after, you know, I'm going to get you. But I really just want to learn to shoot. You know what I'm you're, talking about? He's going yeah. after Carl. Well, I think you're getting a little bit ahead because we. I wanted to talk more about what happens in the first bit of the episode where uh, Carl, not Carl, Rick talks with... Morgan almost puts him on counsel with Carol. Well, okay, so now this is the problem with this episode for me is it was all over the place too, which I'm trying to keep it chronological. Chronological, but so right. now we're so we have the whole um, thing with Glenn, and then it goes to, back to Alexandria. We learn, you know, blah blah blah. Zombies are surrounding yeah. us, and then is that when Morgan goes on trial? Uh, like, the, not trial, Rick but... Sees, Rick sees the wall bleeding, like, in that Aqua Teen Hunger Force episode with Glenn Danzig. It's all I can think of when I see the wall bleeding. Uh, and, we need to talk! In his fucking Rick voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, do, they do. Talk. And Carol's there, right? Mm-hmm. Is it Michonne the, there? On the tribunal. Is Michonne there? I think so. 
So yeah, she's there Sean's because there. she's like, you you can't. I don't know if you can actually live that way anymore. And Morgan's there, and uh, obviously Rick. What did you get out of that whole scene? That little. I loved his line where he said, "Anyone can change. Everyone here has." I think that was the, the thing that stuck out the most about that is that line from Morgan, especially knowing his history and the history he's had with Rick. Where he says, "You would have killed me back there." And, that was my favorite and part. And Rick didn't. And that's when Morgan said, "Anyone can change. Everyone here has." Well, and that was my ma- uh, probably my main favorite part of that scene is where we get that going on, and he's like. Well, why didn't you kill me, Rick? He's like, I know you. And he's like, yeah, but back then I would have killed you in a heartbeat pretty much. Right. And Rick's kind of like taken aback by it, but like, oh, uh, uh. Kind of like, I don't know, putting Rick kind of in the hot seat. And I don't even remember how he fully answers that question besides the fact that he's like, but I knew you. I know you, man. But I agree. That was an interesting scene. Because I think we have Michonne that sits on the fence with the whole issue. I don't think she's got her mind made up either way. We know where Carol and Rick sit. Right. But is Rick, when he's asked that question by Morgan, is he kind of like, hmm, I don't know anymore. Yeah, and I think it's a good point to bring up, too, about the tensions building. Because either Rick has had it up to here, you know, with the... Creature, or he hates Jesus, or he hates renewable energy when they're supposed to meet by the solar panel. <laughs> because he's just right in front of Pastor Worthless. He rips off that you the, know, prayer circle on Sunday by the solar panels. And so I think there's this kind of a rift. Well, it's still developing because it's like we talked about before with all the different ideologies kind of, kind of coming out in the previous episodes with you know. Morgan and all the other to be killed kind of mentality of Rick. Um, I think that conflict's coming more and more into play because we are now into this real threat of real safety. Exactly. Uh, Not just their group, but these people who took them in and they're taking in. That's, That's a little bit different than the prison. The prison felt very temporary, whereas Alexandria feels... Permanent. A far more permanent place for them to be. And so the different ways of them thinking they know how to survive are becoming very, very real. Yes. And very, very threatened by actual people who got in. Yeah, that's very true. And, um, you know, I kind of, when I seen that scene, he's going around, he's putting up his little flyers, like, prayer circle at one by wherever. And Rick just sees it, tears it down, and Carl's like, Dad! <laughs> I think Rick's just like, I'm sick of faith and shit. There's none of that here. <laughs> Maybe he's been reading too much Richard Dawkins. <laughs> yeah, he's like, the God delusion, read this, son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, boy, that's great. If you talking about the shooting training with little... Junior, I can't. I don't know what his name is, and I'm not gonna pretend. Everyone should know who we're talking about, though. Yeah, the the rival. The the very sad boy, the ex boyfriend. Um, (laughs) But I thought it was really interesting. I didn't really care about the soap opera stuff going on between him and Carl when they're teaching how to shoot. But I thought it was really cool. The big tip that uh, Rick gives him is how to hold his gun in order to kill someone with just one shot it's not like a, a self-defense it's not a warning thing it's uh you have to hold it like this aim here because if you miss you're dead mm-hmm. and i thought that was a really interesting way to teach someone how to use a firearm uh, is that maybe a so, precursor is that is carl gonna get shot that way <laughs> in the no, head I hope so. <laughs> not a fan of carl huh? <laughs> Yes, man. Oh, so Alex has UPS coming to his door delivering some of his muscle <laughs> milk right now. <laughs> He's going to go grab that and I'm going to continue to talk to you guys. Anyways, so, but is that, I mean, we have Carl who has now almost started trusting this little junior guy. Sorry, I, I cannot think of his name. 
But, and then they're teaching him how to shoot. Is Carl almost digging his own grave, putting too much trust into this kid who he clearly just stole. I wouldn't say still, but basically got the girlfriend in the end. But she's really no one's. I mean, she runs off. But who knows? Maybe he is digging his own grave. Maybe he's not. Maybe he will end up not even um, getting even confronted. Maybe the kid will just stick the gun back into his back. And we'll all forget about it. Who knows? And Alex is back from his special delivery. <laughs> oh, anyway, so what do you think? I, I mean, to talk about one of my, oh, go ahead, sorry. So I was just talking about with these guys. Um, you know, we we have this junior guy who we, for the life of me, I can't remember his name. But do you think, you know, obviously his intent when he stole this ammunition and he's kind of following Carl was most likely to shoot and kill him. Do you think Carl's almost digging his own grave by trusting this person too much and wanting to teach him these things? I don't think he trusts him. You don't think he trusts him? No. I, don't, I think with the dialogue that they were having where he just kept cutting him off, um, I think that this rivalry thing makes him not like him and therefore doesn't trust him very much. Got you. Maybe Carl wanted him to steal some ammunition. Like, come on, let's have a showdown, old Western style. <laughs> and my favorite thing is this kid who doesn't know anything about gun just walks into the gun holdup and grabs the right bullets. Oh, you know it's what? Just... Well, I he just throws them in his pocket. Maybe he's trying to load forty fives into a nine millimeter. <laughs> yeah, it's just oh well. There's only one ammo type. Uh, Would have been better if he grabbed shotgun shells. There we go. And just following with the shotgun. He's like, I don't know how to use a gun, but this is one of those point and kill types, right? <laughs> bye bye, um, Carl. Boom. <laughs> I did want to talk about someone who's emerging to be one of my favorite characters, and that's Eugene. Why? I loved, loved the scene where they're practicing their machetes, and he's just talking about how people have open toed shoes. Uh, <laughs> it's might like, not be the best to trust him with a machete. Oh it's like god! He's an idiot savant, and I fuck, I love it. He's just this lumbering, doofy idiot, but he's so charming. Just the way he talks, the way he acts, I love him. I, he's one of my favorite characters now. He, he, he is. I mean, if there's a character that I think overthinks stuff a little too much, it's this guy. <laughs> like, is he? I mean, what what is he scared of? She asks him. And, Everything. And he's like, dying. And she's like, it's not death that's scary. That's simple. It's those that die around you. And then he's just like, I'm out of here. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things where you see how unprepared he is for everything. And yet, he somehow tricked everyone into thinking he's a doctor. And has somehow survived this long. It's just one of my favorite things about the show. Very true. Just, he's just so dumb, and yet has made it so far. Yeah, you, you almost have to question yourself, like, how did he survive? But we don't have a huge backstory on him like some of the other characters, and maybe in the future we'll get a backstory that goes back, you know, even farther with him. That would be nice. But uh, just, they, You're a really smart you know, backstory. You're a very smart man. Very clever. Pretend you're dumb, and then people will come and say, "Pretend you're a gym teacher who's pretending to be a doctor, even though you are a doctor." That would be the best. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of? Uh, is it Spencer who tries to get out of the compound, Alexandria, with that little yeah ninja, the Batman grappling hook? Yeah. What did you think of that scene where he's like, "I'm gonna go help," blah blah blah. Do you think he was really his? That was his intention was to help, or did he just want to get the hell out of there? I think it was his intention to help, and I think it's he's kind of panicking and he doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, I won't be one of the again. I hate to be the do this in the comic people, but it was something that they had shot uh, almost seen not seen for scene, but very similar to how they shot it in the comic. And if I'm going based on the show, I really think he's just he wants to help. He just doesn't know how. Got you. And, um, 
He's just one of those people who he thinks he knows what he's doing and really, really doesn't. Kind of like with taking all the stuff, you know, someone's going to take all the stuff and might as well be me. So I, I think love, it's not just survival, but survival for him and his mom and his family. I, I love and how... He's just not very, he's not very clever at it. He doesn't know how to do it the right way. Well, he hasn't been forced with these situations like our main group, but I love how he, you know, the grappling hook fails. He falls. Rick's semi trying to help him. But, God, now I'm forgetting characters' names left and right. What's her bucket? Start shooting. Oh, Tara? Yeah. And boom, boom. Kind of like helping him <laughs> out. And then Rick's like, what the fuck are you doing? And she just basically throws up the finger and like, uh, kiss my ass, Rick. <laughs> And I think that's what Rick Beautiful. needs sometimes because after that he comes up to her he's like, you know, that's not what I meant. I just mean you don't have to help these people. Yeah, and then it goes again to speak about the whole everyone's mentality on how to survive where Rick is kind of trusts only the people he's on. Mm -hmm. The distance of the lack of a better term. Just but He has this tight-knit tight -knit group of people. He doesn't see the value in anybody else because it's only his group of people who know what the fuck they're doing. What do you think? So far, uh, he's right. I mean, the people I, in Alexandria don't know jack about shit. So maybe he seems to be pretty clever. He seems to kind of get it, but he hasn't been around too much, so I don't know. What do you think of the whole prisoner being held and Morgan has now grabbed our doctor lady? And is leading her, obviously, to maybe help this guy and Carol's catching on. You know, I don't I don't know because it's still almost in the same spot. I don't think it's less about the guy that he's got held captive and it's more about um, more about Morgan at, right now than it is about the guy that he's Really? He's got locked up. It's Morgan keeping his secret and almost going to an extreme to prove his point that every life is important. But with that previous episode, we see that people can change, and he's right. He has a very similar men he had a very similar mentality to this guy that he's mm -hmm. got locked up now. I don't know what's going to happen now with the mid season finale coming up. If this guy's going to break loose, if he's going to turn around and help them. But as of right now, I think that's all speculation, and all we can really draw from this is they know something's up they know Morgan's up to something a little sketchy and weird mm -hmm. and it's more of a trust between Carol and Morgan I think well I don't think Carol trusts anyone yeah. except for Rick and Daryl if you want my opinion but um and then we have that that church man like right as the green balloons go up that our two characters just randomly <laughs> find the helium tank out there well, didn't you say because that was my beef, is that they randomly found it, but I think you said it was like a relay point. Where they well, they were. With with the balloons, they were making relay points for when they originally went to do the whole Cory zombie thing. Let them out, get rid of them. But, that being said, it's kind of funny that they just happened to come across the helium tank that they used, hidden like in this tall grass, just sitting there. Well, just like eat it. Just like, oh yeah, I know right where it's at. The helium tank. I know everything about it. You got it. Balloons. Here we go. Yep. It, got it. It. And that and that's the other thing. So they found balloons, but they didn't. I didn't remember finding any unblown up balloons. And the, magically, they have those. They get going. They come up to Alexandria, see the zombies everywhere, and she's like, "Shit, I gotta get the. I'm I'm out of here." And Glenn's like, "No, we've come this far. We'll get in." Blah blah blah. They let the balloons go. Everyone sees, and then that damn church falls. Is it a church? I think so. Because and I think the, that's... I think they're taking the planks out of it. Which was... What I loved was, you know, the, the thing with Rick taking the planks out and reinforcing the walls. Is uh, He just told that kid, hey, we can't shoot guns in here because there's zombies out there, and they're going to hear us. Back to what I was doing. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? We don't want them on one area, but I'm going to yeah. bang. Yeah, it's, this area's a little structurally weak. There's a lot of zombies pushing on it. Just <laughs> hammering away. 
I know, I love it. But so was he the one, was he actually taking wood from that old church building or was he just getting wood from somewhere else? I believe so because he, we saw character Katara taking down those painted black pieces of wood or they were burned one of the two, but it was black pieces of wood and they were using them to structure the... So it was from the church or it wasn't? I believe so. Oh, okay. I the watchtower, but I don't think so. See, my whole thing is, you know, Rick's pulling down these prayer meetings and stuff and just showing his antichrist side. I think God's just like, fuck you. I'm going to knock my building down on your wall. <laughs> <laughs> Heard you read Richard Dawkins. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Screw you. I'm not helping you anymore, buddy. <laughs> no, but so, I mean, this is how it all is ending. I mean, we got this... It's, church tower whatever come down breaks through this steel enforced wall which was kind of surprising to me because it looked like it was pretty enforced well and a wood building took it out but i don't know it's quite possible i didn't i don't know what the slats are made of aluminum or something but before we talk about this back to the whole blood in the like that the thing making the walls bleak. yeah like what <laughs> is the significance of that because they come to that back to that multiple times in the episode and he keeps looking at it you, you know what I mean well I think it just shows that the wall is weak it's vulnerable that there's so many they're really concerned about the walls they're really concerned about the structures and there's so many zombies out there that they're pushing zombies in the front through the actual grates uh, through the, not the grates, but sorry, I was thinking of the prison, but through the, the slats where the bolts and drill bits and all the other... Gotcha. Nuts, bolts, other terms for hardware. So what do you think is going to happen then? I mean, do you think since this whole thing just came crumbling down and now we have a weak spot, it was really climactic towards the end. We have Carl being followed... We have the whole Morgan and Carol thing going on. We got the brick here. We got the balloons. And then just a big boom. And obviously we're getting ready for the last episode. Do you think Alexandria is going to be totally compromised and we're going to leave this location? Here's my... This episode peed in our face. <laughs> so here's how I feel the answer. I think the next episode... I didn't see the what happens next. So I could be dead wrong. Mm-hmm. But I think it'll focus more on the Abraham, Sasha, Daryl aspect. Because I think that's a really good cliffhanger to end the season on. And they have one more episode. So I don't know how much of this is actually going to be resolved. You know, I didn't, and, think, I didn't think about that. And so I don't know how much will be resolved, if any of it. Because they saw the whole other side story going on. And uh, they drug out Glenn's death for three episodes. Um, how long can I don't you? know why they wouldn't do it to us again but if I have to guess um, I think we start to see the division between the people in Alexandria who know what the hell they're doing and those who don't and we're going to see very minimal deaths to Rick's crew a lot of unnamed people are probably going to die Yeah. and I think something will happen to either Morgan or Carol, because there's a lot of conflict going on right there, and I think one way or another it'll come to a head, probably in the likes of that wolf guy. Gotcha. Attacking. I agree, um, and I totally forgot about the whole Abraham, Sasha, and Daryl thing. They're still out there, you know. I think I could see one whole last episode dedicated towards them. They're coming back with that fuel truck, and then they just see the falling of that church and then boom you know tell a little bit more of their story but leave that still as the main cliffhanger yeah I but if I have to guess if I'm going to say that the next episode will be dedicated to what's going on in Alexandria I think the zombos are going to get in I think a majority of the people in Alexandria are going to be killed mm -hmm. mostly side characters if I have to yeah. Let's take a guess. It'll either be DeAndre or Spencer. One of those two is going to get taken out in some sort of dramatic fashion. 
And, Something you know, happened with the wolf that they have locked up. Rick will probably get surrounded by zombies, and he'll hide in a flower garden, get away from it or something. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll drag that out for three episodes. We'll have months to drag that out. <laughs> we'll get to go back to talking about Fear the Walking Dead, and it'll just make it all the worse. Oh, yeah, that will be coming back, won't it? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Hopefully so they can do something better with that. There's, there's one person out there who watched that show and they're like, I like that show. Leave it alone. It was great. The way that it sucked made it good. And who is that? I don't know. Just that one person who's oh. out there who's listening to it. He'll get so <laughs> mad. I liked it. It was great. Well, if, if you did like it, you better let us know in the comments below because I think everyone here thinks you're a lunatic for liking Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, fear that fucking show. Anyways, it looks like we're coming up on our time limit here. Um, any last words on this episode, Alex? I think the one thing that we skipped over was Carol, of course, on the prowl with the baby. <laughs> running around with the baby. Uh I love that she walked in and that little kid's at the top of the stairs. You know, they're monsters. Those monsters that attack. What makes a monster? And Carol said, the only thing that keeps you from become a, becoming a monster is killing, which is a really interesting way to think about that. We've talked about before the way that we view who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, who are the monsters, who aren't the monsters. Oh, yeah. I think it was a really great way to kind of bring that idea more to the forefront to the limelight to get people to see that that's really what's going on here that the story really is about people interacting in a world with crazy monsters and not crazy monsters attacking people who have human interactions i love that you one of the almost like almost glossed over and it was just perfect i loved it i love that you brought that up and you brought up the actual like social aspect of that scene and the the smart people would think about this and all i thought of is she's gonna throw that fucking baby and it's gonna land in a rose bush <laughs> and then she's gonna go chase after morgan <laughs> that's what i wanted to see oh fuck you baby i got shit to do but I think that's a really good ending note, guys. We will see you next week. I am Marcus, and I have my buddy who's <laughs> still laughing. Oh, God. I, was like, I did not expect that answer at all. What's the point? I, I thought you were just throwing the baby. <laughs> what I wanted to see, man. Oh, guys. Well, we are the Horror Junkies of Utah. Go ahead and check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I am Marcus again, and we have... Alex! We will see you guys next week for our last episode. Enjoy the rest of your night. Goodbye.